What you doing picking in them people? No, no, no. no, no. We welcome you in. It is another jam-packed hot edition of For the Record. Now, it is Dash Radio on Dash Talk. I will be joined by Coach PR. Now, the two of us will be joined by two very special guests. The legendary Bone Thugs and Harmony, Crazy Bone and Busy Bone will be in studio talking sports, music, everything in between. So make sure you stay tuned. It is a jam-packed edition of every single week for the record. FTRshow.com dash radio dash talk. Here are the BOC I standard producers of the week. Cleveland's very own LT Mo, you know from Ludacris, DJ Quick, and G Unit, and of course the legendary Large Pro. Needs no introduction. Large Professor. It's all for the record. Crazy Bone, Busy Bone coming up next. And we welcome you back for the record alongside Coach PR, Aton Shander, and as promised, we bring on two very special guests. We are honored, we are pri- privileged of the legendary Bone Thugs and Harmony, Crazy Bone, Busy Bone. Yeah, yeah. What an yeah. honor, gentlemen. Thank you so uh, much honor. for hopping in, right? Yes, indeed. Honor, yeah. indeed. Man. I mean, to be blessed by these gentlemen for the next couple minutes here to talk about yes. some music. You see, repping the Cavs hat all right day. away, right? All, all day, all day. day. So, all day. Let's, let's start there, Crazy. As far <laughs> yeah. as, you know, your squad, it, it wasn't yeah. like last year, clearly, where they were to come back and, you know, yeah. they're going up against monsters this year. So yeah, you got to say, you know, they, they did what they could. Yeah, man, look, the Golden State were, they were the mind stars <laughs> this year. They were, you know what I'm saying? Space Jam all the way, baby, for real. Yes, they, they did that. They did that. Like, you know, like, it was it was just too much firepower, man. You know, LeBron even said it himself. He was like, you know, I never, I never, put, my whole career, I never played a team with this much firepower. So with that being said, I'm confident they're going to go do what they need to do for next year. All right, so we got to ask you, because Clay Thompson oh, yeah, is out name. celebrating, right? Oh, yeah. But he's got a both uh, shirt on. Hey, man, hey, you know what? So what's the deal, right? So, you know, I'm people not even... on the surface may think it might be disrespectful. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I'm, a, That's I'm, not, I'm not even mad. You know, like, <laughs> Clay Thompson is the homie, you know what I'm saying? I, I actually, like, sent those searches to him personally, you know, because I saw him, like, rocking the same. I, I, I saw him rocking the... Uh, Rocking the bone hoodies, so I was like, man, I wanna want to get my dude like some more gear. So I sent it to him. He was he was he was hype, man. He actually told me like that he grew up like listening to bone. So it was like that's dope. Now that the season is over, that's my homie, man. Now that's you can hang dude. out with him now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Must must love the clay, man. You know, Ain't cause, no cause LeBron when he he wears his tees after a game like that, it's, people take it as disrespect. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you know, yeah, they do. But man, 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 it's all love. You know, like clay, he got nothing but love for us. We got nothing but love for him. So it's all love, man, for sure. So yeah. maybe that's like a little recruitment, you know? Hey, come on down he, to he Cleveland. Could, hey. He could be hey. out, you know? Hey. He ain't mad at that. He could be hey. trading mm. them. Yeah, man, you can have the whole Lake Erie, man. Yeah. Just come on down, man. We give you the <laughs> whole thing, man. Right? It's I all love good. It. <laughs> What's up? I love it. Um, <laughs> speaking of uh, the Cavaliers and sports, what about, you know, the Cleveland Indians? How you doing? Oh man, I'm a, man, honestly, like I ain't gonna even sit here in front. I really wasn't a big baseball fan until last year. Until <laughs> they went to the yeah, yeah, until t- they went to the um the World Series. So now I find myself this year. I've been watching the games. I'm I'm learning more about baseball. I never knew some of this stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like so, I'm learning about baseball. So they really they really got my attention this year, man. But. Anything Cleveland, I'm representing. Even if, even if the Browns, the Cleveland Browns, bro. Like, come on, bro. Like, I'm disappointed. Every I post videos with paper bag on my head every year, but every year I still support them. So it's like that's how it is in Cleveland. You know, we try to keep this whole thing positive. That's how it is the in Browns. Cleveland. You know, right? I know. I know. Yeah, we try to keep this minutes. positive. But, but, I know, man. But, but tell them, tell them, yeah. what, did, what did I do? I showed you my license. You see my government, hey. Yes, indeed. I'm my, my, Cleveland. Cleveland. Cleveland for sure. Yes, hey, indeed. Hey, you root for the Steelers. What? I am a Steelers fan though. Oh well, well, well I don't care. Wait, 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 I don't care what your name stands for. <laughs> you a Steelers fan? A oh, Steelers that's out the door. Oh, that's a violation, right? That's a violation. You can't be from Cleveland. And that's one violation. And that's one team in Cleveland I cannot take. I would. You never see me wearing a Browns jersey. Brown, bro. And you would never see me wearing a Steelers jersey. I just can't do it. You wear Buckeyes all day. All day, Buckeyes all day. Wow, I love it. All right, let's talk about the album. Right, so how does this come about? Man, new ways, man. It's shit. I mean, Cray and myself, you know, been a long time coming for him and myself to do a duet. You know, people out like 
we do shows and things of that nature. You know, people love our verses, you know, a lot. You know, and they was like, you two especially have to do something together. We know that it'll be a classic. And we thought the same exact thing. And, um, you know, along with Lobel, along with a team of producers and a few different other business people, we wanted to put this together, you know, basically for the fans. Because they kept they kept saying, we need something new. We need a new bone record. We need something new. We need something high. And we wanted to make sure that it was something that wasn't subpar or we wanted to make sure it was over the top. And that's what we did with this record. We really wanted to make it like a real record that we put our effort, our energy into and in our comfort zone and really tried to give them something new, hot for the next 10, 20 years. Because when we do shows, we doing stuff from the early 90s. We wanted to make sure this stuff that we put together in 2017 is going to be there for 2040. Yeah. So that was how we put this together. How did you get Tank? How did that, how did that happen? Family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tank, yeah oh, oh, yeah. We've been like a lot of people don't know like a lot of like tours we did like early in our career. Tank was just getting started, so he was opening up a lot of those shows. Wow. Mm-hmm. And like you know, like we 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 kept in touch with him over the years, bro. And, like just like you said, he's family. Like yeah. so when we called him, he was like, bro, y'all, what? I'll be there in ten minutes. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't and, picture and he you was and Tank there. and Bone Thugs doing a record together. Bro. It's like you know, like bro, he's a huge fan, like as we are of him. So it's like it, it, it was just all love, like you know what I'm saying? I know, like it's a lot. It's a lot of people we mess with that's like that that we real cool that like people wouldn't even know but like so it's 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 a cool thing like when he came on board to like rock with us on that nice. as you talk about evolving the sound you know making it last for for years to come how do you see it now as far as you know what y'all have been you know being icons in this game and then seeing young people that you know how they measure up and, and also you know how you evolve your own sound we got the blueprint. I think we put the blueprint for the future of music out there. Um, scat rap, you know, um, fast rap, harmony rap, while you're rapping fast. Um, I think that, you know, our blueprint has been been here for a while now, and it's still, it's still evolving um, for the youngsters, you know, and they're taking it to new heights. Then Auto-Tune came in there. You know what I mean? It went even further. You know, that's a Roger Troutman thing. You know what I mean? That's an Ohio thing as well. You know, he basically made that up. Like, he basically invented auto-tune. Mm-hmm. You know, um, mm-hmm. as far as making it popular. Roger Troutman and Zap, if you know. Exactly. Computer love. Exactly. A lot of people remember computer love. And, you know, a lot of people don't even know that, too. Yeah. Yeah. It's more right. bounce to the ounce and all of that other stuff. So, you know. Um, it's just good to see it uh, moving in a in a forward like in a forward motion. You know what I mean? Like it's not it's not declining. You know what I mean? And New York is the like the toughest place in order to get accepted in hip hop because New York created hip hop. It started here, graffiti, break dancing, and went out to the entire world. You know what I mean? They they kept it. They cultivated it here. So you know. It's just good to see that happening. You know what I mean? This is like the mecca of hip hop, and it will always be the mecca of hip hop. And then, and New York embraced Bone Thugs. Oh, yeah, as soon as right Biggie did his thing, it took New York That's a like minute. Like New York ain't just right? gonna, yeah. New York ain't just gonna love you just because you sell records or because you're right. the newest, hottest exactly. thing out there. Biggie, you gotta be had to walk us in for real and give us the rights to okay, y'all are okay, y'all style is okay. Let me show them how we do it out here. And he gave us that blessing and that love, and and the East Coast have, have always given us love and respect from them. Pun, he came mm-hmm. out rocking, yeah. rapping yeah. cold. He came out there just Bro, <laughs> real. killing. Yeah. Yeah. So it, you know, it's very it's, underrated too. Pun. Oh, yeah. oh you know, I just think late. you know, it's just like Pac and Big. You know, he was gone too soon. You yeah. know, before we got enough from him. You know what I mean? We had yeah. it was four or five more records we needed from Pun. Seriously, <laughs> we had four yeah, or five man. more. But his yeah. son. Yeah. yeah. So do I hear Lil Busy and his son doing the record? Oh my or goodness! I'm well, I'm busy, I hear Lil Busy. You know, you know. And Kane and the freshman class, of, the freshman class of 2018, gonna be massive. Oh yeah, because there's a lot of it's a lot of our gen, you know, like a lot of our youngins and like people right. we dealing with, like younger dudes. You know what I'm saying? Like so, like we 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 pretty much understand what we gotta do. Like, that's why we out here solidifying what we've done, so we can sit back and like pass it to these 
to these next guests that's coming up under us, and Not we can sit back and be like, and helping them out and showing them. Right, you like, like give it to them, like, okay, don't fuck up the legacy. Yeah, we're right. giving you this, don't fuck it up. Right. So run with this, like, just like Easy did for us. Like, yeah, right. I, I'm giving you all y'all walking shoes. Now run with them, motherfucker. Yeah. That's, mm-hmm. that's what he told us for real, and that's what we did. It's so. amazing, right? So nothing really changes but, as far as bro. the advice you get handed down. Exactly. From Easy to now where y'all at with Kane? And, and that's others. how I was, man. And, 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 and that's really how it's supposed to go. Like, and that's when I get upset when I see like how. How the like how many like the industry and the media tries to turn the BGs of hip hop against the OGs. They they try to make them few. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like when when that. when really you can't have one without the other. Like these dudes, like right. uh, like like what I would say to all these young cats, it will better you in your career in the long run if you sit down with a legend of your same field and you question the death out of them. I saw an interview with, with, with Michael Jackson. He said, when I met Kobe Bryant, I told him, you make sure you sit down and you talk to every great basketball player that's ever been before you and watch how much better you get. So like when, so like these young cats, like when these dudes, like when the OG dudes is coming at y'all trying to give you like advice, it ain't that these dudes is trying to tell you what to do, it's trying to tell you like how the game puts us against each other and how the game is going to try to play you. Because like when you don't listen, they're trying to tell you you're going to end up just like us if you don't listen to what we're telling you. Because they have that experience. They've been there. So just listen. It don't mean you got to live your whole life based on what the nigga telling you. Right, but right. just keep it in the back of your mind because it may come into play when you really need this advice one day. Really. Is this what you talk about in your show? Oh, yeah. All, but but, but my, my radio show is called Hip Hop and Beyond. What I do is I play hip hop from the very beginning until now. And they'll bring it all together because, like, how they try to separate it. Yeah. I don't like that. Like, right, because right, because right. you can't have this new shit without the golden age. Right. You can't have the golden age without the beginning of hip hop. So, like, we go back and teach them, like, oh, yeah, you remember this song? Well, this nigga made it first. They took it from him. And people be like, oh, we never knew. Oh, so, like, so it's knowledge. I'm giving them knowledge back because you can't be a artist that has longevity if you're doing something that you know nothing about. I'm right. sorry. Right. When I saw the Joe Budden and Lil Yachty thing, I think it got bent out of shape because I think Joe Budden was trying to tell him that same thing, but the way he it's how he said it, it came probably across was, right. probably offended dude. Mm-hmm. But like what dude really needed be like, bro, it's like like we've been that route. Like learn learn the business because you're gonna wish you did one day. Yes. You're gonna look back and be like, damn, that's what they was trying to tell me. Is that new? Is that is the is there maybe there isn't, but <clears throat> Is resistance from the youth in this game new? No, no, hell no. Because yeah, people try to, what? what? <laughs> I mean, you guys were the same right. way too, right? That's what I'm Easy. saying. Right. I had the little dude Easy up. tried to <laughs> tell us shit. Like, nigga, fuck you. What you talking about? Yeah. Give me my money. And you're from the hood too. You ain't trying exactly. to get that shit. Like, like when you young, but like. So you some, think it's harder and, now or, or easier? Oh, oh, yeah, it's way harder now. It's way harder now because like, it's like, I don't know what it is, but like, you know, like it's. There's so many dudes in the game that just got into this business that's filthy rich. I don't know how to, I, I don't know how they do it, but you, I don't know how you get into the game and you're filthy rich all of a sudden because that's not how it goes. You know, like this TV is 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 fooling a lot of people, but that's and not. The internet. It struggles, man. It struggles. Like you don't just get in the shit one day and the next day you driving a goddamn Bentley. Right. Like that shit don't work. I don't give a who. It, it don't work like that. Unless you was a big drug kingpin that happened to make it out the streets right. with all that money. It's bullshit. Right. No lie. Sure. All right, we're joint. Go ahead. No, no, no. All right, so oh, he's dropping juice. I'm listening. Yeah, I know, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sitting there just soaking it I'm all in because listen to the show. It's on Dash Radio, also. Oh yeah, right. definitely. That's yeah, what we yeah. want to do. We get yes, the promo indeed. out for it, as yes, far as indeed, where people bro. can listen to yes, it. Yes, yes. Yeah. Know. So after you listen here to our show, you know you can check out his show. Yes, what, indeed. What days? Wednesday, seven to seven to ten p.m. West Coast. Yeah, seven to ten. That's on a different day, y'all. So make sure you know, check that yes, out. Yes, yes, yes. And is it the same chronology like you used to set up as far as you know something that may be on the eighties, nineties today, or does it change each show as far as you know? You might be feeling a connection from an artist that did features, Bro. you know, in, in in like the late eighties before he put out albums like mid nineties or. Yeah, I, I mean, what I, what I what we do is like we. I, I pretty much like mix the music together. I could play like an old school song and then I play something, like something new. Because it's like, like what I tell people at the end of the day, like it's all music. It came from the same place, the same culture. Like, so it's it, it's, it's always relevant because without it, like, because like I say, without this, you wouldn't have this. Like, and like people don't, people be listening 
like to music and don't really know the history of it. And I tell people, if you want longevity, you you have to you have to know music, not just like do it, but you have to know music. You have to have that love for it to where you know it, because that's the only way you're gonna master it. Is if you truly know it and you're passionate about it, that's the only way, bro. Like for real, like, and that's why we still in it to this day, cause we started out. I don't give a fuck about like what goes on about like. I could do an album in a fucking day, bro. Like, mm. because I love the music. Like, I I have that drive. Like, I don't give a fuck, nigga. You you ain't got to pay me shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm gonna do that. Because I, I I'm really one of them dudes that love the shit. Like, still to this day. And that hunger grows, Biz, as, as you get older in the game, and then and then you see young kids, and you try to identify that as far as like who who can carry that torch. Because I feel like the hunger would be that key piece of the DNA, right? What, you mean the hunger for, for my boys? Just, just right, that you identify, okay, you know, people can rap, people can, can you know, put together an album, but the longevity factor, right? I'm sure that's what y'all looking at for, for young yeah. people now. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, if you're trying to, like, it just depends. Like, you see, like, when he was saying about Lil Yachty, you know, like, you have a financial, you have a financial life longevity, and you also have a music longevity. And, you know, that's, it's a thin line because you don't know who just wants to be a musician and who's in it for the music and who wants to be a mogul as well and who wants to elevate it because you have some people that don't really want to be moguls and they just want to be musicians, but you want them to get their fair shake at the same time and you want to make sure that they're well versed in everything as well. And, you know, in order, I think in order to get it across to, to someone is to really find out, does little Yachty want to be a CEO? You might find out that he says, no, I really don't want to be a CEO, but I want to be smart about what I'm doing. You know, I may be trapped into something where if I don't sign a 360, then I won't get Sprite. I won't get, I won't get the endorsements because, you know, the industry will cut me off from all of this hype that I from it because they want to control it and if they can't control it then they'll find someone that they can control and manufacture you know like the boy bands and stuff how they be putting the boy bands together from each little city and putting them all together and like new kids on the block yeah, and stuff yeah. and stuff like that you know um so you might find out that these these kids have been you know um cornered and been put in a corner and making the best out of what they can make. So, you know, you might want to tell them, you know, just how to keep their finances in order and how to prioritize as, as far as that. But the industry will, you know, people will do that. It's, it's a devious game. You know, it's a lot. It's a very, very devious game. And people will, people will take the talent out of it in order to monopolize the situation. Like, so, you know, when you're in a privileged position like Jay-Z, you know, he played the role. He let Dame Dash be the bad guy. You know, and then he made his move, and that was really, really smart of him. Uh, uh, Diddy came up, you know, under Mr. Harrell, and worked his way up, you know, and you know he, he stood to the side. He danced on Biggie's stage, you know what I mean? He danced with Mary J. Danced, and, and then he danced his way to the top, and then them dancing shoes turned into mogul shoes and CEO shoes, you know. So it's all about how you play the game and how you how you waltz in. You know, so yes, it's a chess match with, with that, and you know it's difficult to maneuver. That's probably why Lil Yachty wasn't receiving it because he's coming in on a different angle and a different end. You know, but so he, he didn't he didn't study the game. So it's like Craig said, you have to study the game. You have to know some of these guys. You see these artists go on stage and they don't even know the words. Yeah, yeah bro. Like, you know what I'm like, 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 how you gonna be in hip hop? And I don't know, I don't know Bone Thugs words. Like I'm. Steve said that hip hop don't know you. Yeah. Like you at least yeah, should know that, right? Yeah, because these industry people are letting in who they can control. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? And that's the whole thing. Yeah, with social media and all of that stuff that's going on and that coming in, you know, there is still that that whole thing about controlling the industry and controlling the money. And so on. And yeah, I just seen a guy so yeah, I just seen a guy sell two hundred million live streams mm. and for each million for each million streams you make 5,000 so for 200 million live streams he only made $100,000 and that's good money you know that's good green but 200 million, 200 million streams live yeah. streams, streams. 200 yeah. million streams. Yeah. 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 that's really not good green when you think about uh, that that, that, that doesn't add up but I'm not a back in the days you know you sell yeah. a million yeah. records yeah. 
and that's what twenty something million dollars that you would have made off of a million records. Uh, uh, t- ten, 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 ten mil, million, yeah. Ten, like twenty, uh, like after it all was added up, like you just sell a million. Re- it's just the game is so different now. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, like it's just playing each situation for what it is. I think and telling these youngsters, okay, what do you want to be? This is what's going on. This is what this is what's happening. Because some of them aren't really like. You know, artists. Right. They're like, right. They, right. they so. like not really artists. Like artists, yeah, artists, yeah. artists, artists. Right. Yeah. Like people that you're gonna be like, okay, he gonna be here for another ten years. Some of them can't really, really rap. Right. Like get down, get down. Yeah. Get yeah. Down. yeah. yeah. You they know what I mean? Yeah. It's like yeah. they're just they're on the hooks. They got them cold hooks. They got that really, really nice track, and they got real good promotion, and they're really, really hot and really, really hype for the moment. And the kids need something new because yeah. the golden age been rocking shit. For a long, long time. That's why we yeah. still out there touring with music from the yeah. '90s because and then it, nothing these, is. Go ahead. Go no, ahead. No, 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 no. And then, and then you have these. Um, I think in 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 the game, in, uh, like today, we have these like what people call like culture vultures. Yeah. To where they yeah. get in and they they love the culture so much and like and, and, and you know I really don't I don't I really don't like blame the artists all the way like because. Like the labels have a lot to do with this too, like because like these labels been in business for a very, very long time. They know what like, you know what I'm saying? It's like they it's like they watering down like like the stuff culture, that's man. been yeah. they've watering down like stuff that's been like, you know, like this this is like been going for years and like like the like the twist they trying to put on it, like it's cool like for the younger generation, because don't nothing stay the same. Mm-hmm. But it's like I don't feel like you know, like they're they're just like giving these dudes these deals and not explaining nothing to them. Just like, because they know like a lot of these dudes are getting to the business. They don't care nothing about nothing but being on TV and being famous. They ain't even thinking about like the part of the money part yet. And then like, it's hard to like tell these dudes something when they're constantly getting this money in. These advances they think is money, but their advances they think it's money and like you know what I'm saying it's hard to tell them that when you got this money just like it was for us like we, we was getting that money and then you can't fuck you you hating right, right. <laughs> kiss yeah. my ass yeah. I got money nigga. I got money kiss yeah. my ass you know what I'm saying like so it's like you have to go through that process as a new artist I don't give a fuck what you do how many times you talk to these dudes it's like experience is always the best teacher in these in these circumstances yes. like when you get in this game it's always the best because nobody's going to listen. Everybody think they got it down packed when they get into the game, but you don't because it's some shit you ain't never experienced before. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to punch you in the mouth a few times. Yeah, You're going to you lose a couple of teeth. Get up. Get up. I love yes, it. Definitely. Gem after gem right here. The legendary Crazy Bone, Busy Bone, the iconic Bone Thugs and Harmony alongside Coach PR, Aton Shainer. Quick break. We'll be right back. We got a couple more things we want to bounce off y'all. Music, sports. Speaking yeah. of iconic, your manager as well. All for the record. Who's your manager? <laughs> uh, we welcome you back. It is for the record alongside Coach PR, Aton Shander. And yes, we are joined by Crazy Bone, Busy Bone, Bone Thugs and Harmony. We're talking a lot about music and sports and obviously the Cleveland Cavalier connection. So real quick, I wanted to bounce this off you and see what you thought was more of a sucker move. Is it Draymond with the nut punch? Or is it J.R. Smith who likes to jump in after like three or four dudes already scuffling <laughs> and throw that shoulder into the fight? <laughs> man, I, oh, I, um, I don't know, man. Both, both are kind of, <laughs> yeah, you know, both of them suspect, foul. right? Yeah, both of them foul. I say like, like both of them foul. Maybe Draymond because you got to stay away from that yeah, area. At least J.R. keeping it above the body, right? Yeah. Yeah. Play with the That's a violation here, right? Right? Yeah. I don't okay. care. Yeah. I don't care who it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a violation here, right there. Man. That's some shit right there. You, know, yeah. you got to wear a cup next real, time out. Definitely. And it's running in the family over there. Jaja's throwing point punches to the nuts, too, now. Like, yeah. Are they coaching that shit out yeah, there? Like, like, what I don't know. You know, what's going on, man? I don't know. Did you think it was weak for Durant to go out there? Like a sucker way out to leave no, OKC. No. I didn't either. No, no. But you know he gets so much criticism now because that's the. Like, I mean, I mean, I think, to do. I, I mean, think I think he could have beat him. I, I think, think he could have beat him. I think that Oklahoma City think that. <laughs> yeah, I think they I should think, think that. Yeah, they should, West, you were up three one. I think yeah. the, I think the whole city think that. I think Westbrook uh, think that. I think that people that are like like me into that. into it into it into it into it think that way I know Michael Jordan thinks that way and he is he is like he, he's he's yeah. basketball he's Mr. Basketball he didn't appreciate it. 
You yes, know what I'm saying? It was up 3-1 and then you yeah, Michael lose Jordan, and then go join Michael them. Jordan don't appreciate something. I, think, I don't think Kobe appreciated nope. it. I don't think no basketball player, no legendary basketball player respected it. Right. Because the right. rivalry is what right. made Boston against the Lakers. It made yeah. basketball. It yeah. made basketball what it was. But I think that, but as far as us, like we didn't need Way, so. so what do you think though? It's Are you like saying you don't money. think that? No. It's like, it's like get your money. I had to go out to Los Angeles with my boys and and go get our championship. You know what I mean? LeBron had to go to Miami to go get his championship. That was actually the first championship in Cleveland. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's like we're <laughs> yeah, out step out of our comfort zone and, and make something of ourselves. You can't knock the next man. But being up that I'm a Cavs fan, I yeah. know they playing Warriors <laughs> and the Thunder. <laughs> Minus West. <laughs> <Right. laughs> you yeah. had to score 179 points <laughs> to beat them. Yeah. Absolutely. No Everybody's joke. getting 30 points on them. Yeah. No and Draymond joke. Green, he make 11 points, but normally he 29 to the good. 25 points, 22, 23. Yeah. But it makes me, but, 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 uh, but I say this all the time, but it makes me feel good though. Like, And LeBron should be feeling this way too because like, you know, they had to they had to go have four All Star players to really tackle one dude. Yeah. I mean, they would uh, come on. They wouldn't really think, oh, we need we need to get uh, uh, KD for Kyrie Irving. The only thing that was on their mind is we need to beat not the Cavaliers, LeBron, LeBron James. James. Yeah, that's we why need, he said it though. And that's a bad dude, KD right? He said right it though. KD said he said that's a bad dude, right? Like, so I don't I care what they take way. from him. That's a bad dude right there. Well, like, think about real. it. A lot of people don't remember. And it that's was... another reason he probably went to the, because, like, if you think about it, he's like, okay, mm-hmm. we didn't get past, even if we would have got past the Warriors, I we would still had to play the Cavs. Who the beat the Warriors. Yeah. Yeah. You, know? you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so, it probably was a lot on his mind. Like, this, this, we living in a generation to everybody wants it now, even in hip hop. That's why you don't got that many groups. Because right. everybody want to be the one to shine. Yeah, I was wondering. Everybody want to be that dude that's that shine right now. Like, so groups ain't really like, you know what I'm saying? They may come, but they go fast. Fast. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, like, just like in um football, everybody want that championship now. So they going to start. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if football start doing these all star super teams trying to get to a yeah. Super Bowl ring faster than they. That was you know what I'm saying? That was young. one of the ones to try to do that. Like, for real. Yeah, the thing. Yeah, right, yeah, when they were to draft, and then you. I'm and looking at the Raiders like, oh yeah. man, they got Marshawn yeah, Lynch right now. They yeah. about to be beast. That's right you, now. and that's how you usually do it. You yeah, they about to beast like right now for real. The thing that gets me about LeBron, and it's not the biggest thing, but it's such an under-discussed thing about the criticism. And, and listen, I'm such a huge fan of his individually. Yeah, yeah, is that he never played like all the other guys he gets compared to. They all had legends that were coaching him exactly. and growing him. And I'm thinking like in the music game, this would be somebody with like unbelievable skills. That was just strapped to the wackest fucking producer, For you know, real. and like yeah. could never get out of these terrible beats and That's poor real. promotion. That's Meanwhile, real. y'all, you could recognize right away the guy's got an amazing yeah, skill, and definitely. it's like definitely. that. That always got me about him, and I feel like maybe Pat Riley, yeah. Phil Jackson. What if these dudes was coaching him, yeah. not Mike yeah, Brown? Really. Yeah, and yeah, the dude like, he ran well, out, Black. Well, yeah. yes, um, Tyrone Lou is a legend. That stepped over by Iverson. That's right. That's what he's yeah, known for. Yeah, yeah. That's what he's known that's for. What you getting, know for. Getting like, walked over. Like, excuse right. me. I think he's doing a real good job because, like, he has LeBron on. Like, LeBron has to be damn near uncoachable because he is so goddamn good. <laughs> that's a he's good point. So yeah. goddamn good. I like his style. He's real humble, and he, regardless, he he guided them. Guided them to that championship. Of course, LeBron had to step it up. Of course, and Kyrie coach, had to Le- step LeBron it up. LeBron had to coach too, though. Come yeah, on. Yeah, well, yeah, he yeah, yeah, call yeah. Those, He got to call those plays. You're right. He's got to play that position because sometimes it can be overwhelming when you're on that court. So, yeah, definitely. And that like was I shocking said, to me, right? Because I didn't know, him, you know, some of the some of the some of the best coaches, you know, might not have been superstars on the on the on the on the, on the, uh, on the court. Yeah, they really are, are, right? A lot of them. Like are, Magic yeah. struggled, and yeah, yeah. usually like Gretzky. A lot of these guys that yeah, are really was a good, good ball player. He aren't was a good that good? Ball player. Yeah, Man, right? they're, they're usually marginal guys. Right. Man, right, I'm saying like, they, if you're they, really good on the floor, it's hard to be a good coach. They usually struggle when they get that chance. That's why you get like catchers in yeah. baseball who see the game a lot. Yeah. That come right. good managers as opposed to you know like yeah. an ace pitcher. 
who might I mean, be out. Man, so basketball did. is point guards because they see the floor. Yeah, yeah but yeah, even yeah. still, it's not like like Biz was saying. It's not you don't get these superstar guys that turn into great coaches. The ones that were sitting on the bench watching. Yep. all the time. I mm-hmm. noticed that. Steve Kerr mm-hmm. was dope. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 yeah he's a- At the end of the day, when you talk about like the the criticism, I mean the criticism that LeBron James get, it's like you know what I'm saying. Like people, I mean, I I, I seem to notice that people criticize like when like, like people will build you up and say you the greatest, but as soon as you say it, they start to hate you. Yeah, 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 yeah. As soon as it comes out of yeah. your mouth, then oh oh he's hardy. Yeah, he's yeah. Th- y'all been telling me this the whole oh, fucking time. Oh, yeah, no you know what I'm saying? And like, living and, up to and, it too. And he's been living up to it because when you get a dude that like makes history, even when he loses games, he's been doing that all year. He's making history losing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like in a good way though. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? Like he triple double every game. Like like you get man, and 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 now all of a sudden like you gonna start hearing KD's the best player in the world. I don't know how. Yeah, they right. gonna start saying that. <laughs> they gonna start saying it. I guarantee you, they start saying it, like making him feel like, okay, it's the end of the LeBron James era. KD's coming in. Yeah, oh, that's Paul Pierce saying that. Okay. It's not Paul the Pierce end of LeBron James era. He's not done, yeah, son. I'm sorry, yeah. but he's not done. I'm gonna tell you though, man. If they don't touch that Golden State Warriors team, they bet not, they sh- they should not lose another game for four years. Mm-hmm. Seriously, and of course, everybody stays healthy. You know. Yeah, that's want true. Everybody to be healthy because we want to see these fellas make it, you know, out the locker room. You know what I mean? But that's a badass team. <laughs> that's yeah. a badass Firepower. team. Firepower. Absolutely. All right, let's talk. Let's switch gears a little bit to music because I know you were at Summer Jam, Biz, and you had a chance to perform uh, with Faith. What was that like, Faith? That was real fun just to see everybody back there. You know, uh, Faith is the home girl. You know what I mean? She makes sure that got everything that you need you know you need something to drink you need something to smoke everything it's just <laughs> like she's just she is all that she's all that as a woman as a mother and as an artist um it was good it was good to see little c's and you know we go way back c's and bone we go back to these kids we were kids yeah we were kids on the road just uh he was telling me, he was like, man, you remember that time they kicked us out the Motel 6? I said, the Motel 6? <laughs> I said, that was bad, man. When you smoking too much herb in the Motel 6, you, know, you got to get it. it. Ain't nothing but the 5 and the 4 left after that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You done. It's budget 10 Motel. But it was, it was really, really fun. I had a really, really good time. And, you know, the highlight of my night, you know, besides, you know, watching her on stage and she asked me to say the prayer for her birthday. You know what I mean? So that was, it was really, really cool. I did, I see, really, I did see that. The yeah. Somebody put on IG. I, think I had a real good time. <laughs> I had a real good time. I, I, had, I smoked good. You know, nice. I was, it was good. What, what's it your was favorite good. strain? Every strain. Every strain. Yeah, every I have strain. no preference. The shit that so gets handed to you. you yeah, you yeah. Know? I have you no indulge? preference. But, man, I used to smoke, but I can't, you know what I'm saying, because of like, Medical problems, but I do take edibles. Edibles, everything. every day, and they strong. It's better than it's smoke. better than it's better than edibles. I can have an edible and be high all day. Ain't got yeah. to worry about keeping some rolling. Right. I'm high all day. All I'm day, good yes, all yes, day, yes. for real. I'm high now. Matter of fact, <laughs> <laughs> I think we all are <laughs> for real. Seriously. <laughs> all right. So we heard rumor that you know everybody's gonna be on this album, mm. and you know, Scott Storch is gonna be on this album. So we heard, you know, we heard some rumblings about this album being some power move right here. Yeah, yeah, man. We went out, you know. I mean, we we wanted to go out and make it make it the best experience for our fans, we, like possible. Because you know, we really not known for a lot of features on our albums because, like, it was like when we first came out, it was like, okay, but where do they fit? <laughs> it was that kind of problem we had with features, and you know, like before we did the um, Pac and the Biggie and like Mariah's and stuff like that, but like. Now it's like with so many people like that's influenced by our style, it's easier for it's easy for us to and do it, like features. And plus now. it's just two of us too. Yeah, so we yeah, had enough know, room exactly. to, to add some extras on there and, and do some extra stuff as well. My background. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, definitely. So man, we went out and we got like a uh, Bun B, which I've always been a fan of UGK, OG in the gang. We got Yellow Wolf, I've always been a fan of him. We got a uh, um we got Tank, we got Stephen Marley. The Marley's, you know, like that's that's family. We, we, 
Yeah, we're dealing with them. Oh, that's a lot of bro, Uncle Murder, about, too. I'm talking about Uncle Murder. Uncle Murder. We got Uncle Murder on the song. We got uh, that's a good one too. We got uh, Jesse Rankins. We got uh, Eric Bullinger. We got um, the dude from Corn, uh, Jonathan Davis, lead singer. We got. Yeah, man. You got Bone Thugs and Harmony on with the whole definitely, group. Definitely. So, yeah, definitely yeah, got yeah. the crew on there. That's what's up. Crew that's had to be on there. That's it. That's what I mean, actually, I just feel like you know, you work with a lot of different courses. Three people that you haven't worked with that you would love to have you know, work with on your wish list. Well, one, one I know it can't ever happen because he's no longer here, but Michael Jackson. Mm-hmm. That's, uh-huh. that, yeah. that's the whole reason I got into the... Wow. Music, bro. We like, I saw him when he done that like Motown thing, and I saw like the electricity of him dancing on stage. And I told my mother, I was like, "That's what I want to do when I grow up." And she was like, "Boy, get out of here!" And I was like, "No, I'm, I'm serious. I'm like, <laughs> no, I'm really serious." <laughs> and and every day after that, I was in the mirror doing Michael Jackson like a motherfucker, like, "Hey, <laughs> be, bro, going at it, like you know, what I'm saying like." So that's my whole inspiration, like Michael Jackson, and to this day, we still haven't worked with Dr. Dre. I don't know why. You know Man. what I'm saying? We need to we need to get in the lab Steve. with Dr. Dre. Hey, hey, Steve. Dr. Dre, I need some beats, and I ain't talking Steve. about the headphones, goddammit. <laughs> I need some real beats, wow. baby. Wow. Yeah, definitely, man. And uh, uh man, um, the third person, um, I don't know, man. I'm like over there work, work with anybody, but like those, those two, like like I said, one can't happen, but Dr. Dre is still an option. You still heard Dre, so come on, man. Come on. What you did? Definitely Dre. And I definitely always wanted to do some stuff with Eminem. Oh, yeah, definitely. I always thought that him and me on something, or him and Bone on something, would be fire. Um, definitely. That's crazy, too, that that didn't happen. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Start thinking yeah, about this. We all like, family. And I, I actually, <laughs> to be honest with you, my third choice would actually be everybody that came from the umbrella of NWA, all the offspring. Yeah. Snoop, the Fitty. That's another one, 250. Like, yeah, man. Uh, oh, uh, Smarter, Eminem, just so. everybody that, that Dre, Easy, the whole, the and Q yeah. put out. I would love to see it just be one big shebang. You know what I mean? Because just that's the same that's double that's the album, same, that shit. What's crazy is because that's the same, it's the same umbrella. Like, and it's funny that that didn't happen. All right, it is For the Record, alongside Crazy Bone, Busy Bone, Coach PR, Aton Shander, and chatting everything from music, sports, and all things in between the world of hip-hop. And talked recently about, you know, Biz being out there at Summer Jam, the calves, of course, and the heartaches that they're suffering. Stomach aches. Oh. It's tough, man. You know, it, it's tough. And we, we did stay away from the obvious questions, you know, about LeBron leaving. But you heard in the back, end game, end game, so we might as well mention, of course, your iconic manager as well, Steve Lobel, who's yes, great indeed. and does a lot for us here for the record as well. So, oh, yeah. you know, it's it's not, I would think it's not the norm to be associated with somebody and have that long term of a relationship in this business. So I imagine you all have learned a lot from Steve. Oh, yeah, man. It, it's, it's family, man. We've been rocking with each other for like for years. And, like, we, time, right? Oh, yeah. Like, we learn from each other you know, like, on the way. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, we, we both was up and coming when we met each other. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, in what we do. Like, so, like, the, so, so, like, the rate, the relationship has just been, like, hand in hand, like, the entire way. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why we still rock it right now to this day. So do you, like, do you have the relationship with Steve that you could be, like, tell him off? Like, you let him know, you know, go in on him. Bro, bro. And then right after that, like, <laughs> like you know, like, some guys just take it sensitive. Like, you know, I know Steve's family and stuff. Bro, like, like, I'm not on a business level. Then right after that, it's like nothing happened. Like, brothers. Bro, Steve LaBelle, Steve LaBelle can tell you himself, like, if dealing with Bone, you cannot be sensitive at all. Right. You, you, because for one, you're dealing with five different dudes. I've never seen anybody that can handle it like but him. Like, right. like be cussed out and be, be cussed out and, you know what I'm saying? Cuss, more more like, cuss us back out, like, well, fuck you too. You know, like, like, <laughs> yeah. And, and and dudes respect it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like so it's like you know like that takes time, like a bond like that takes time to build to where you like to, to where you can be real with a dude and tell him the real and he already and like he knows like when when certain shit comes to the table where like for us, he can tell them without even oh Oh hell no, they ain't doing that they shit. They not doing that. They ain't, no, I, I'm not taking that to them, like because right. he knows like what we fucking with and right. what we ain't like. And so I trust it's always there. good to have that bond, like seriously, seriously. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, it, I know it's difficult for him to have to deal with 
you know, all of us individually and mm-hmm. then all of us as a group. Who's the most difficult to deal with? Who I think? Yeah. For Lobel? Probably Flesh. Yeah. Yeah, cause, all know. these niggas. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he was saying. Right? How, how many times did he remind you that he's from Queens? <laughs> Every day. <laughs> Yo, son, I'm from Queens. <laughs> son. <laughs> we know, we know. Yeah, yeah, we know that already, right? We know that, real. son. For real. <laughs> Seriously. But I'm sure it's it's beyond just you know education and, and learning from each other. Branding, I, I imagine, is a huge part of this, right? As yes. y'all continue to yes, man, get older on the planet and continue to expand and continue to make new music. Yes, indeed, man. Yeah, that, the that. game progressive. You know, Lil Bell, one of those kind of guys that move and shake with the game. As new things happen, new relevant things happen, he's on it. But not just like not, not just music, but but like where the companies are going. Who's the hottest new companies? Who's the hottest new A&Rs? Who's the hottest new producers? Um, Lobel stay on that, you know? And that's good to have, that's good to have in your corner, you know? Because sometimes artists get, with us being innovators and us innovating a style of our own, you know, you can get complacent and you could like get set in your ways. And, you know, Lobel, one of those kind of guys that he's never set. New York is, New York is like that, though. Right. It's first on fashion. It's first on music. It's first on what's hip, what's not, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. New York is, New York is keep that way. So he's Real. a true New Yorker. You got to see the game a couple steps New ahead, York. right? Exactly. You got to. All man. boroughs, baby. <laughs> Real, you yeah, speaking of boroughs, you guys came to the restaurant. I appreciate you guys. You know, yeah, hey, man. It was some good food, too, man. This is I'm a shameless plug, though. You get it, right? Oh, look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Burgers yes. Cafe, you know, in Queens. <laughs> yes, indeed. Good had food. to do that. Come on. Man. No, I'm with you, man. <laughs> just <laughs> letting you go. Just letting y'all roll. Yeah, you the co-sign. Like, the food was no, good, right? No, yeah, 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 definitely. You know. All right, so, you know, Biz, big sneakerhead, too. Yes. So, what's your favorite kicks you rocking out? Probably Jordan. Yeah? Yeah, I love Jordan. You're not rocking the uh, Alonzo Balls, right? The $500. Hey, he's going to like You know it, what man. I like recently, though, to be honest with you? I'm not I'm not saying this because he's from the land, but Kyrie shoes. Yeah. I love them. Yeah. yeah. They feel good on your feet, and they look good. So you got, you got a pair? You got a pair. Yeah, I got a couple pair of Kyrie's, but I'm still a Jordan. Still a Georgia, yeah, Georgia, 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 Georgia. Shit, I'm sure yeah, Kyrie personalized a, a couple Kyrie for y'all. Pair of shoes oh, yeah. We're going to need them. So it's all Jordans all the time? Always. I love my Jordans. Which, and one's, it, which one's the best one, Jordan? I, I, I can't choose. I can't. It's a gang of them. I just got these new patent leather joints. Uh, uh, Mars. Uh, forget what they call them. I just got the uh, dark. They, they black. Are they, they retro? The blue on them. Um, I forgot. The Mars, what was that from the Spike Lee? Uh, I believe. The, the Mars, Mars Blackman joints? But the black. The, the, Space Mod. Yeah, yeah, the Space Jam joints. Yeah, Space yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 I know yeah. what you're talking about. Right. Oh, the man. leather, that's the remake or the re release, right? With the leather? Yeah, with the but they black. You yeah. Know what I'm yeah. And I got the old schools. I got the I got the ones with the North Carolina, um, and then I got the ones with the dark blue too. Look yeah, at love. you. That's yeah, dope. Yeah, they look good because oh, yeah. you can wear them like in a cool little dressy situation and they still right, 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 right. Still great. Right, what's a bigger violation to wear? Adidas or Reebok? I like both. Oh, okay. Because uh, I knew you're more Jordan, so I yeah, didn't know if you, sp- if you would expand no, out. Oh, yeah. I'm okay. okay. Too, so it's yeah. not just Jordan. I like the Pumas. Yeah, I, like, I like the old school Kangaroos. I still re- if I, I see don't a good know, pair, nobody remember the Kangaroos. You see I a good looking pair of feelers, you get them. You yeah. 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 that shit, the little pocket, yeah. you can put your little crack in there and shit. That's what's up. That's what's up. Crack, crack. Fellas, I can't tell you how much fun this has been, really. Man, it's love. It's, it's been an education as well. You know? So love. Yeah. Real quick, so let's just get everything out there for everybody as far as, you know, platforms and ways yes, in which people can find y'all and, and stay up on everything as well, okay. because that's a huge part go ahead, of what crack. we do, you know? Well, man, if you're looking for the scoop on all five members of Bone, you can go to Facebook, Bone Thugs and Harmony. You can go to Twitter, BTNH Live. Also, Instagram, BTNH Live. Looking for me personally, I'm on uh, Twitter, I am Crazy Bone. Instagram, Crazy underscore Bone. Facebook, Crazy Jack Your Boss. And um, I also have a website for my radio show, The Quick Fix, at quickfixlife.com. Go there, get the latest scoop for news and everything that's going on with Bone, concerts, everything. On um, Dash. On Dash. Dash. If you're looking for Busy Bone on my Facebook page, it's I Am Busy Bone. Um, my Instagram is Mr. McCain, M R M C C A N E. And like Cray said, you know, just we appreciate everything. You know, yeah, yeah. supporting the entire band, Cray, 
play, biz, wish, flesh, all of us the are next generation. Offsprings. It's, Yo, just, it's a beautiful thing. New yeah. Waves. Make sure it's June 23rd. It's New Waves. It's, it's a record that people are going to love. Y'all going to be jamming to it. Each song is single material. It's just a great thing, and we appreciate you guys here for just having us here. Oh, listen, it's, it's our you, pleasure. Man. All right, real what quick, on your way out, because I think the whole room wants to know this. Individually, what's your favorite verse on a bone track? And you can go back as far as y'all want. Uh, start correct. Well, like, what's your favorite verse? Like, of mine. You could say, you could say, any, yeah, any, of yours. You could uh, say uh, of the crew. You could say of the feature. Um, you could take it any way y'all want. What song? Let it's, me help you out with that one, man. What, what, the one with Biggie. All right. That's it. <laughs> no, I mean, no, no, listen. No, I'm just, <laughs> go ahead. So, no, honestly, that, that's why we left it wide open exactly. because it's you know it's about what y'all experience. I, I would say like one one of, one of my favorite verses is not is not. Um, the verse on the original Notorious Thugs It's the one that Swiss Beats Remix And the reason why Is because The spit your game Talk your shit your game, You know what I'm saying yeah. It was that one Because like When I When I laid that verse Down to the original one I had that verse written Before we had even Met Easy e It was an old ass verse And like I had woke up And I was like Okay so I, I look like I'm in I'm in shape So I, I went right in the booth And like the first thing Came to my mind I spit that verse but I never liked the verse. Right. Never. Uh -huh. But when I tried to change it, Puff was like, yo, what the fuck is you doing? That verse is fire. Put that verse back on it. And I was like, okay, well, fuck it. It's your song. Fuck yeah, it. Yeah. But so when I got a chance to like remix the song, I was like, I'm going to kill this motherfucker now because I felt like I slipped on that one. So that's why I went in right. so hard. It was like, was like, it's like came with a whole new like energy on that one right there. So. I gotta say that verse right there, hands down, because I already went in on that. Wow, that's what's up. Puff, Puff See? even told me he was like, "Yo, you shit it on that verse, man. You shit it on my folks on that verse." Sure. Mine, the was both, mine was both the Pac and the Big. Those were my favorite verses because you know, they were legends. Yeah, those were my favorite verses too. As far as with mom, I like my, I like this one on there. Uh, what is it called? New Thug World Order. Um, uh, all the way. Oh yeah, I like that one too. Um, it's a couple of them, man. We done had some bangers. We had some bangers, but I just Classics. say pocket big. You know the yeah, pocket big one, definitely. Well, man, appreciate you guys coming through there, man. man thank you. I love. Man. Appreciate you for you know. Let me be part of the group and everything like that. I'll be on the next <laughs> album, eight times. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but um, yeah, yeah. catch us right, on the next album. Right. Hey, you guys, yeah, my yeah. government name is Cleveland. Yeah. I am down in with both of them. Now what? I don't know, man. You're really going to let this Steelers fan in? Oh, man, shit. You have to throw that in. Hey, hey, West, I don't know what he told you. Steelers thing canceled the whole deal for me. So I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> right, I, I get it. Like Y'all want to rep the region, but at <laughs> some point you have to draw lines. Yeah, right? Right. State lines that hey, get you the know, fuck out of here. And I love, I love the city of Pittsburgh. I love West Khalifa. I just don't like the Steelers. You just don't like the Steelers? You don't like the winners, man. I don't. I don't. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Snoop, Snoop knows. Too. Snoop yeah. knows. Snoop knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Snoop. Pittsburgh still. He's fan a Stiller kid. fan. Die hard Big too. That's fan. my dude. So, all right. So we'll keep going real quick because I know I keep saying real quick, real quick, but shit pops up, and you know we want to take advantage of the time that y'all here. So we talked about you know current state. We talked about the future, but look at old school influence, and you could classify old school whatever era. You know, looking back, maybe it's people that are no longer making music, but mm -hmm. I'm sure that there are two, three names that pop that have specific like personal influence not only just your yeah. favorite artists right yeah i mean man for me it would have to be ll cool j for the simple fact you're like you know like ll cool j like when i heard his music that made me i wanted to know his song so bad that i would like get my little tape cassette and I would listen, I would play his songs and stop the tape every two bars just to write his lyrics down until I had the whole song. And I would like, like, because I wanted to know the lyrics to the song. So once I did that, I started to like, realize the pattern of rap. Like, I was like, oh, so he's, he's making the last two words of every sentence rhyme. I can do that. And I wrote my first rap off that, bro. I was like, wow. That was my blueprint, like to write wow. my rap. You know what I'm wow. saying? Like, and um, uh -huh. second, I would have to say Big Daddy Kane. I was a Big Daddy Kane fanatic. Had the, had the cameo, had the slices in the eyebrow. I even, I got a chance. Your to favorite Kane, <laughs> bro, bro, bro. Your favorite Kane. <laughs> Listen, I got a chance to interview him on my show, and 
man. And when I told everybody that, that's all everybody said. Y'all kind of look alike. Yeah, you look like your big that's brother crazy. or something, yeah. right? <laughs> and then I would have to say KRS one because like this dude was had so much flow and he was before his time and the shit he talked about still to this day is relevant. Right. Rap is like a setup. A lot of games. Yeah. A lot of suckers with colorful names. I'm so and so. I'm this. I'm that. But they all just wick, wick, what? You can play it today, and I guarantee you, a rapper will swear he's dissing them. I swear to God. Isn't that shit? I swear to God. Yeah. He said it too. Rocking Trust a microphone me. till a motherfucking 60. <laughs> For and real. And 60, he yeah. damn near did, hey, put an album out. And yeah. he's gotten better. Yeah, he got better. Yeah. <laughs> he's gotten better. For real. That's dangerous. For real. That's yeah. so cool, you For know, real. to, to dope see that inside biz. Like, what, what would you say as far as, you know, DLC, older influence? Ooh. Definitely. Yeah. TOC. Um, Rock him. Yeah. And Dana Day. Dana Day. Because he had them um, stories. Yeah. I love stories. Right. Like, Storytelling. Yeah. I was following. It was just, yeah, three, three definitely come to mind. I used to listen to Rock M like this because I had to stay Because I, I, you know, I had insomnia all the time. Yeah, like, <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> Worse than listening to him. Low as hell. Seriously. 0. <laughs> 0.1, 0. 0.5, you know, <laughs> <laughs> listening to him. Yeah, so. Definitely. That's what's up, I got one, uh, about an artist right now that can survive the 90s. Oh, that's what like, now could the Warriors the... beat the Jordan Bulls? Uh, right, so in rap right, right now, now that could survive the 90s. J. Cole. And yeah. uh, I'll say Kendrick Lamar. Those are the easy. Them, take, let's take J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar, okay. and Drake out. Those okay. three. Now, um, well, could Drake survive the 90s? Yeah, Drake could. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, definitely. definitely. Just okay. making sure. Um, can't say Lil Wayne came out the man, so he definitely survived it. Right. Like, like, I don't actually, um, new artists Could now. you project somebody and be like, yo, that's... Man, new artists like, like Nipsey or somebody? I think Lupe could survive the night. When okay. he came... Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. How about... I'm, I'll give you one. I'll, I'll, I'll ask you. Uh, how about um, the Migos? Yeah, I think they can survive it. I don't know. 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 Because, it, because like, I mean... It was hard to be accepted in, in those times, bro. Like, we were barely accepted. Right, because like, you did, and look what happened. Right, right, but I, I, I think that's what opened up the door. But like, like at that time, like before us, I don't, I don't think so. I think, I think after us, late in the 90s, yes. Yeah, I think that they could accept it because of what we did in the 90s, because of how their rap style is. That it, that it, that it, that it. It's, it's pretty innovative, and it would be but it took brand the time. But there was but it took that came the after time. you at night that didn't survive. It could have been brand. It sounded like you guys. It took, it it took so long brand, for us brand, to really be accepted. Us. It took, really, like, especially in New York, like, we wasn't, like, like, it, like, it took us a, like it, it took us a while to be accepted, like, it, in a lot of places. Yeah. Like, people wasn't, like, really feeling it. Oh, yeah, we had to put in some work. Oh, yeah, put yeah some like, work. But even after you did, like, and then people came in after you, the artists that came in after you guys, they sounded like you too. They tried to do the same rap, same way, same, but they didn't survive. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I just go through some names. Because they're not original. They, 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 <laughs> yeah. They try to bite off the originators. Yeah, I mean, that's that real. shit don't I mean, last. That, 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 I mean, the, 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 the 48 laws of power is very real when they say the first, Robert Green. The very first law is like, you can never outshine the master. So if you right. are blessed to create your lane, you never have to worry about nobody else like outdoing you. That's like, right. Knocking you out that lane because you, you're the creator of it for real. So that's what's up, fellas. Again, I know yes, I've indeed. said it a couple of times, but thank y'all so much for the time, it's all the love. insight, the energy, and yeah, everything. Yeah. Plus, we gotta go smoke. It's time to go smoke. Let's go. Yeah, I know. That's, that's what's up. Crazy <laughs> bone. <laughs> Busy bone. That's Coach PR. I'm Aton Shader. All of this right here, right yeah. here, is for the record. For the record. The FTR Show. Dot. Like I said, my boy was like, you know what that name put me on? And then it got caught, caught on. I, when you came with the second single.